Kamel, thank you so much for being here with us today. We're at the International Seed Federation's 2015 World Seed Congress in Krakow. I understand uh, um, that in January you um, went from serving as president and CEO of Bayer Crop Science Canadian operations to being regional head for seeds for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, and you've been in, pre in various roles with Bayer for over 24 years, so you've got an extensive history with the company. Um, how has your experience in working um, in Canada uh, and elsewhere helped you in your new position and how are you incorporating that experience? Well, good morning, Julie. Thanks for having me here. Um, you know, one thing I'd say about the last 24 years in biocrop science, it's been a very diverse uh, journey and the ability of uh, our family to adjust in different working environments has been very helpful for us to grow uh, personally on the professional side having the ability to deal with different uh, customers, channel partners and growers around the world is something I've enjoyed and experienced uh, over the years and, and certainly will be an asset, I think, for me taking that new role within EMEA. Mm -hmm. uh, EMEA is a very wide region, uh, very diverse uh, in nature, uh, with many cultures and different languages. And I think the ability for us to adjust our offer in each and every country is, is a formidable uh, challenge that, that I'd like to embrace within uh, EMEA Seeds and developing our portfolio. We've been discussing global seed industry concerns here at the conference. Um, how can they be dealt with uh, most effectively? And what's, what, are, what do you see as the biggest issues in Europe, Africa and the Middle East region? You know, one of the challenges that I see, having been five months in the job, is continuing to elevate industry standards in EMEA Seeds. Uh, our key crops, uh, as I mentioned later, are our seeds, uh, cotton, wheat and rice. Uh, certainly we have a history uh, with these crops and particularly a strong one with oil seeds that I've experienced in my time in Canada. And one of the challenges I think we'd like to, f to, 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 to uh, see happening and one of the opportunities too is to raise industry standards to, uh, to higher levels uh, within the MIA seeds. That's number one. Uh, I'd say number two is innovation. You know, EMEA, by nature, is a different society than North America, Latin America, and so on. So we need to find the right innovation to bring to these markets, together with our child partner, to, to help the growers uh, develop uh, you know, healthier crops and, and, and face the challenge of uh, feeding a hungry world. So that's the, the two biggest challenges I see within, uh, within this particular region of EMEA. And from your perspective, um, what uh, What's the plan to kind of overcome those two issues or how are you, how are you tackling them? So we have made major investments uh, in EMEA that are, that are continuing on. Uh, our history in North Seed is relatively recent. We started to enter the market in 2012 and we have invested uh, significantly in infrastructure, in, in breeding and also in seed processing uh, in Germany. And in breeding, uh, you know, we have uh, assets in Belgium um, that, are go that are working really to deploy our innovation resources across EMEA. Uh, that's number one. And the second one is really working closer with the, the, the channel partner to develop integrated solution with our crop protection colleagues uh, to bring on the farm um, as well as agronomic services and tailor-made solution uh, that will really make a difference uh, on the farm at global level. And for that we are working very closely with our channel partner. To, to bring those tailor-made solutions. These are the two angles we're, uh, we're working on, on that perspective. That uh, on-farm agronomic um, experience and practice that we know is so critical to increasing yields and, and helping farmers reach that next level. Um, three years ago, Bayer reviewed its African operations and came up with a plan to significantly ramp up its presence there, especially with regard to seed sales. How has that progressed to where you are today and how did, how did you get there? You know, Julia, I'd say that any company that has a global ambition as, as we do has to uh, be present in Africa significantly. This is where most of the growth in population is going to come in, in, the, in the future. Uh, you know, when we look at 2050, the dynamics in population. We have uh, decided to make a significant uh, increase in footprint in Africa, not just, you know, as seeds but as part of buyer as part of the buyer group and uh, importantly for us uh, it is to bring innovation uh, at global level 
uh, to raise income uh, on the farm because if you look at the society a lot of the development step have started by raising farming income this is how you start to build and generate uh, extra wealth for the country then you can develop education infrastructure and that's what uh, we've uh, we've taken the commitment to do in Africa as part of our African uh, strategy with your experience in Canada, um, you certainly became uh, familiar with the cereal seed sector. Now that you're in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe, uh, can you tell me what's coming down the pipeline when we look at wheat? You know, Julia, I'd say that wheat is the most exciting story ahead of us as an industry. If you look at uh, you know, the, the, the various crops and what happened in terms of technology, a revolution for lack of a better word. Wheat has really been an orphan in, in the last uh, decades. If you look ahead with the growth in population and, and change in dietary needs, things will have to happen in wheat in a similar way that they have if you look at corn and other crops. So that's number one. There is a significant excitement from the industry to bring innovation in wheat. What are we doing for that? We have um, significantly invested uh, in EMEA, uh, in, in breeding for wheat. Our uh, hub for breeding is located in Gattersleben, Germany, for wheat. Uh, we also have um, a center uh, for production of haploids in lab in Paris, in Mille la Forêt. And combining those strengths together, we are looking at developing innovation in wheat. Uh, hybrid wheat is obviously a big milestone in, in game changing into that industry, but also looking at traits that are going to add value uh, to the consumer, but also the value chain. Bayer Crop Science is underlining its ambition to become a major player in the European oilseed rate market with a 15 million euro investment in an ultra-modern seed processing, fine cleaning and seed treatment center for oilseed rape. What's your overall vision for oilseeds in 2015 and beyond? You know, Julie, there's no doubt in our mind, I talked about the investment we made earlier uh, in, in breeding for oilseed rape. And this is the other side of the investment, which is on the operational side, uh, creating a hub of excellence. That will be the platform to supply our uh, uh, oilseed portfolio uh, within EMEA. And by doing that, we aim at being an industry leader in oilseed. We know how to do this. We've done that in other parts of the world, as you know, not to mention Canada. We are going to replicate a similar story in EMEA. And humble enough to say that we won't do this alone, because we have a lot to work with different partners in OC, but also in other crops. So, uh, but that's clearly an objective for us: is raising to become an industry leader within EMEA oilseed um, in the future. Oil seeds has been on uh, the radar screen and in the news quite a bit here lately. Can you speak at all to uh, what the market demands are for oil seed? You know, oil seed, uh, if you look at the history in Europe, has been really driven by the biofuel policy that Europe has adopted. I think it's back in 2007 and 2008. Uh, we've seen since then a significant increase in oil seed uh, acres. Uh, there are not some discussions now around, you know, the subsidies and how long this is going to pursue. Uh, and I think there is, there is a lot of opportunities ahead of us um, in that environment to continue to have a sustainable biofuel use of all seed rape in Europe. Uh, we believe in that opportunity, but I would say this. The other thing we have to look at, and there's probably additional opportunity, is the use of oil seed rape oil into human consumption because of its benefit on human health. This is what drove a lot of the consumption in North America, particularly Canada. I think Europe w would benefit from looking at such an opportunity down the road, beyond the biofuel one. Super. Thank you for sharing your perspective there. Do you have anything else that you'd like our viewers to know uh, with regards to uh, Bayer Crop Science and what you guys are working on? Uh, thanks, Julie. You know, I just want to convey my excitement around the opportunities ahead of us in agriculture. This is a great industry. Uh, I'd like to invite more talents to join us uh, in the future and, and continue to build uh, around an exciting story that we have ahead of us, not only in EMEA, but also around the world. So thank you. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you uh, joining us here today and uh, uh, insight from your leadership and expertise. Thank you, Julie.